you are all chanting so beautifully. First time I am hearing <coughs> no, not, no many glitches, everything is flowing very beautifully. Huh? So last week we passed at the meaning of, where did we pass? Where did we stop last class? No, no, I am asking you. Huh? Ah, that's where we stopped. Ganadin Purva Mukcharya. Yes, yes, Saira. Thank you. Yeah. Ganadin Purva Mukcharya. And that's where we passed. So, we were beginning to talk about for every one of these mantras, there is a there is a no meaning for every one of the mantras there is a who is the guy that a god no there is a scientist yes right and who is the scientist that gave forth this mantra huh? I already explained to you last week huh? Newton huh you weren't there? I mean physically here, but I not mental. Oh, you were. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah you, were, you were practicing, but this guy, you were there, no? In the class? Yeah. Ladies? Hello? I'm going to separate you guys. Yeah. Who is the scientist for this mantra? I told last week. I know you guys were. Group 3 was not here. Group 2? Yes? Vishwamitra, right. Hello. Vishwamitra for Gayatri Mantra. Not for this one. Ayyo. I am just giving spiritual entertainment here. Yeah? Huh? You chanted in the mantra, no? Ganaka Rishi. When you, you, when you hear the word Rishi is equal to scientist. Remember that. When you hear the word Rishi, it is no different from scientist. Only difference is the scientist experiment in the external world and the Rishi's experiment in internal world. Whatever is experienced outside is actually only coming from inside. Right? How do we know that? Whatever you experience outside is coming from inside. How do we know that? Swami says, reaction, reflection and resound. Reaction, reflection and resound. Everything that you experience is coming from inside only. Because even before the experience comes, what comes? Hallyo. You are all in bliss today morning. Huh? Even before the experience comes, the thought comes. And where is the thought coming from? Outside or inside? Inside. Yes. So, when you judge somebody, that person is bad, where is the thought coming from? Inside. Inside. Now, Swami Vivekananda says very beautifully, if you put in a room, in the center of a table, there is a pot of, pot of gold. And there is a boy playing in that room. Somebody walks in and then they take the gold and walk away. You saw that scene. What do you think happened? Yeah? No, no, what boy was supposed to... I asked you. You are watching a scene. You are watching a scene on the screen. There was a room. In the room there is a table. And in the t on the table there is a pot of gold coins. And you can see the gold coins. There was a boy playing in that room. A person walks into that room. Takes gold coins puts it in his pocket, walk away. What do you think has happened? Hello? They, they, um, like the boy told someone and they called the police and then he got, and, and then they, everyone started looking for him. Okay. See, the boy, yeah, somebody called the police and the boy actually was okay. All that stuff. Okay, what happened? Hello, what happened? What do you think happened? Yeah. The, the guy took the gold, he stole it. Yeah, what happened? The boy got robbed. The boy got robbed. Yeah, what else? He wasn't guarding it, and he, had to, he sneaked, and the man 
The man sneaked in and he took oh. the gold. Yeah. What happened? There was a leprechaun and he was so tiny. He took the gold and left. <laughs> See how beautiful the imagination is? See how many ways they are describing the scene? Aren't they describing the scene very nicely? Huh? So Swami Vivekananda describes this scene. Actually nothing happened. The man is the owner of the house. He had gold coins. He had to take some gold, walk away. He has a child that is playing in the room. Nothing happened. But who created all this scene? What did we just, just now? We already judged the person is a thief. We already judged he sneaked in. He was stealing the gold. The boy got robbed. All that stuff we created, isn't it? Hello? Excuse me. Isn't that? Yeah, that's very interesting. Yes. What if he was the boy's dad? Yeah, what if he was the boy's dad? Yeah. But do you think the boy who has no idea about the value of the gold, what do you think the boy thought? Somebody came in, took some coins, walked away, or he had nothing to do with what happened? Hello, excuse me. No, no, no. no. Only when I ask questions, you raise your hand. If you keep on raising your hand, my hand hurts. <laughs> Guess which hands? <laughs> okay. Guess which hands? Yeah, sit down, can I sit down? Yeah. So, so what happened? You projected your thought onto a scene. There was a scene. It happened. And what did you do? What did we all do just now? We just projected what we thought has happened onto the scene. It could be nothing to do with whatever the... We don't know what is the... St so for everything that we see in this world, we create our own stories. Huh? Yes. For everything we see in this world, we create our own stories. And our own stories are, I walked into the center, that person did not smile at me. Maybe I did something wrong. <laughs> that person didn't pay attention to you. There's nothing to do with you. You understand? Hello children, well, listen to this very carefully. This is very important for you. Because as you get programmed over the age, you create perceptions. And these perceptions you project onto the external world. And that perception and what you judged is nothing to do with what happened. It's just the story you tell yourself. And then from that story, you make an experience out of it. And then you feel happy, you feel unhappy, you feel depressed, you feel motivated, you feel prejudiced, you feel all kinds of things. But what has happened is nothing to do with it. It's your thought that is getting projected outside. You understand? Now, how is that relevant to what we are learning in the guide, this mantra, what we are saying? So... I was talking about the inner world and the outer world. Now what the rishis have experienced is that they started experimenting with themselves. They started observing their own self rather than observing others. We are constantly asking who are you, what is your name, where did you come from, where do you live, what type of mortgage you pay, how many start options you have, what type of sarees you wear, where did you buy the diamonds, all this stuff, where did you, what did you, go, who did you, where, to all this you, 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 this is always external projection. But we are never asking the questions, who am I, where did I come from, what did I do, where is my path. When is my birthday? When is my birthday? How am I going? Who am I going to call? Huh? Where is my house? Evil, send the evil. Yeah, where is my house? Yeah. Where is my Sit down. <laughs> we got excited. You see, all these children so engaged already. Huh? So the point is, the point about this is, what you ask about yourself and try to know yourself is inquiry, I-N-Q-U-I-R-Y. What you ask about everything outside is enquiry. Scientists are doing enquiry in the outside world. And the rishis, the scientists of the inner world, are thinking about themselves. They are asking the question, where are my thoughts coming from? Where are my instincts coming from? Where are these inst how are these instincts programmed? Whether you believe it or not, I was talking about this in South Africa. A boy, this, this Nitin's age, he got up and said, Uncle, what is mind? He asked me. What is mind? How do I know what is mind? Huh? So, the point of what we are talking about is, Ganaka Rishi, the person, a Rishi, the scientist, that is experimenting on the inner world 
has now in the beginning he said what divinity is all about it is infinite it is beyond the three shaktis it is beyond the three states of existence gunatrayatitah avasthatrayatitah dehatrayatitah kalatrayatitah all it is beyond everything it's beyond everything it's beyond everything it is nothing but it is the brahma it is the vishnu it is the rudra it is the agni it is the indra it is the vayu it is the surya it is the chandra and it is the brahma bhur bhuvasvarom everything he said it is infinite now the logic is if something is totally infinite it is beyond even the thought how do you actually get to know it because you cannot know anything without the thought you understand right you cannot know anything without the thought remember this scientists are still trying to figure this out and they will never figure it out because when scientists described he was asked what is a particle energy now the number of particles of energy are constantly increasing every year if you are an atomic physicist they started with rigid bodies and from there now came to particles and from particles they are coming to what are called strings the strings theory right have you heard about about it yeah yeah the creation of the universe started with the strings and now each string is given a name now there are so many strings that are being invented by every scientist so one scientist fundamentally described that even the energy of a thought will create a different string so there are that many number of strings as the number of thoughts <coughs> hello are you all blissed out enough for if you don't understand keep raise your hand because i don't want this to be a lecture i want you to i want you to connect to why are we chanting these mantras what's the purpose of chanting these mantras question or comment okay please keep it down we'll come to it later yeah so the when he experiences the infinity the paradox or the logic flaw is how do you know that is infinite with something called as a thought which is a finite thing is it possible to know something that is infinite with a finite thing is it possible is it a difficult question kind of huh? no. yeah it's impossible it's not possible to know something infinite with something finite so but you can only experience the part of the infinite as much as your thought is so you understand connect what i'm saying what you can experience of the infinite can only be a part of what your thought is which is finite and that each part is a different mantra of experiencing the divinity when all the mantras put together then they will become knowing the infinite but you can only know the infinite by a finite thought what you experience is finite but he is beyond even that finite so what he started to then express this rishi ganaka rishi started to express the infinite which he described before has a finite thought that he just experienced and that became what is called om gam and what he experienced was then he started describing how he experienced om this om gam what does om gam mean it doesn't mean anything it is just an experience expressed as a mantra <coughs> hello people ask the question what does om gam mean in south africa it was very cute one guy because we were doing this chanting om gam ganapati om gam ganapati we were doing that and so many places one gentleman came to me after the program and gave me the chewing gum and he said please take chewing gum he said why should i he said you're doing too much om gam ganapati <laughs> and he connected to the gum as gum i said that's a, at least the experience of gum so he said okay i will take the gum just because you said that what does gum mean for that man it meant chewing gum yeah okay <laughs> that's funny sitan <laughs> om gam ganapati ha huh? om gam ganapataye namaha now when he described all of this he described ganadi in purva mucharya first i chanted about what are all the ganas the divinity the the experience that he has varnadi 
tadanantaram. Now he is trying to describe his experience in letters. Varnadim tadanantaram. Anuswarah parataraha. Anuswaram means in, for, in Sanskrit when they write letters, there is what's called anuswaram. Like for example in Om, when you write the Om, there is a half moon that you put on the top. That's called anuswaraha. Parataraha. Adhendu lasitam. Then half a circle. Now imagine at the point of the time in infinity, when you go eternal time, there was no language that people spoke. It was only experience. They could look at each other and understand already what they are thinking, what they are, what they are, there was no need for verbal communication. Even the thoughts could be understood. You understand? Hello? Now how do we know that that how did people communicate with each other? Today, we require so many ways of communication. You need email, you need cell phone, you need... And all that you want to talk, they give you as minutes. <coughs> what? Uh, the point is to talk less, but they say all you want to talk, they will give as minutes. <laughs> See how bad the humanity is becoming? The point is to be silent, but now what we have come to? All what you want to talk. All what you want to eat. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> eh? You are supposed to eat only little. But what, what are we being told on the commercials? All what you want to eat. So no ceiling on desires, no control. Even talking is spending energy. Right? Even talking is spending energy. And you are supposed to talk only as much as you have to talk. But yet, we have all these tools given to us and we talk as if we have nothing else to do and we are talking, talking, talking. You get bored, you pick up the cell phone, you call somebody, you gossip. You waste all the energy that you have been given. And you have nothing else to do, you have video games, you keep on doing this and this and this and this and your mind is going crazy with that stuff in your hand. You are spending energy, you are spending your mental energy. So in times of Vedas, in the times of these Rishis, they never even had to talk. They will look at the individual, they already knew what that other person wanted, what that other person is thinking, because they were in total silence. But this Rishi, when he experienced this, he couldn't describe all what he has experienced, he can only express a little bit of the infinity with one formula called Om Gam just like Einstein experienced with the energy theory and he expressed it only as one finite aspect of energy which is E is equal to mc square but even he could not describe all the different types of energies there are gaps in Einstein's theories of relativity you understand? Just like a scientist cannot describe everything that they experienced. They can only put it on paper what they experienced as one formula. And what Ganaka Rishi experienced, he could only put as one formula. And that formula is Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Now, my phone line. No, it is connected. Okay, well, I'll check. No, it is connected. I should be. There are 14 people online. Oh, the phone line. I haven't connected the phone. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, I don't, uh, we'll worry about that later, that's okay, because next week I'll dial in. This week I haven't, I can dial in, but why don't we all, while I'm doing that, I would like you all to chant from Om Ganadin, Ganadin Purva Mucharya. Let, let's start with, from Gunatraya Titaha. From Gunatraya Titaha. Everybody chant, please. Yes, 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 y
Then simply putting the letters itself did not become the mantra, right? If you just say, you, you, you need the sound in order to say the letters. So first he experienced the G, A, M, Gam became that. Then with Om became Om Gam. But the Om and the Gam had to be joined. So it became Om Gam. And when he joined that, it had to be set in a meter, in a particular rhythm. And that meter is called Nichrit Gayatri. There are eight different patterns of chanting, what are called the meters. And each of these meters, for example, Vishnu Sahasranamam is in a meter called Jagati meter. And Rudram is in Anushtup Chandas, which is a meter. Like, like that, there are eight different meters. Meters means rhythms in which they are chanted, right? So the meter in which you chant is, is also important because when you speak, if you don't... Is there a meter to it? No, it is a garbled, right? It's garbled. So when you speak, when you communicate, you, you have to communicate in a meter so that the other person, the rhythm, you will be able to communicate clearly. And the meter in which you see how beautiful this is, this is all science. Can you ever even imagine that what you speak has a meter? What you chant has a meter? There is a rhythm to it and the energy of the letters combined with the meter and the meter in which that mantra is is called Nichirud Gayatri and like that there were eight different meters right Nichirud Gayatri Chandaha then what he chanted has a form that he has seen when he chanted and that form is actually Ganapati Gana means senses Pati means Lord, the one who is beyond even the senses is Ganapati. What that means is the experienced divinity that he had seen was the controller of the senses. Huh? Hello? Rajan, is this all making sense now? Yeah. See how beautiful everything is connected in the context of a human being. Ganapati Devata. Then people have actually done experimentation with it. Now there are artificial intelligence machines and that are linked to silicon graphics and you can feed a pattern of energy and when you feed the pattern of energy and when that energy pattern repeats a number of millions of times then the pattern of the repetition takes a form. And if you sit down and say 10 million times completely focused on Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha you will see that the energy pattern takes a form. And that form he described Ekadantaya Vidmahe Vakratundaya Dhimahe Tannodante Prachodayat Did I explain to who was the scientist for Sai Gayatri last week? Did I explain? Yeah? Yeah. Who is the scientist for Sai Gayatri? Yeah? Hey, no. If you take notes, you will remember. You all come here, spiritual entertainment. When you go... Yeah. Subramanya Shastri. G. Subramanya Shastri. Gandhi Kota. And he experienced Swami's love as an energy that is emanating and spreading all over that place. And then it became the Gayatri, Sai Gayatri, like that. Now this is Ganapati Gayatri, Ekadantaya Vidmahe, Vakratundaya Dhimahe, Tanno Dante Prachodayat, Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha, Om Gam Ganapataye Ekadantaya Vidmahe Ekadantaya Vidmahe Ekadantaya Vidmahe 
sorry, I, I made a mistake. It's not. Eka Dantaya Vidmahe. Eka Dantaya Vidmahe. Eka Dantaya Vidmahe. Vakra Tundaya Dhimahe. Vakra Tundaya Dhimahe. Tannodante prachodaya ad Tannodante prachodaya ad Tannodante prachodaya ad They're dreaming? No. no, come back to the class, sir. Chant, and everybody is chanting, you should chant. Same thing, when everybody is singing bhajans, you should be singing bhajans. You should clap, you should sing. You don't meditate when bhajans are going on and you don't talk when meditation is going on. You understand? Hello, Shailja. Are you following? Are you chanting? How many of you are chanting? I can't hear you. Chant louder. Huh? Eka, Eka. So when, when chanting this particular Gayatri, we have Vidmahe, Dhimahe, Prachodaya as common things. I will explain what they mean. But when you are chanting, there is a pattern of chanting. Eka Dantaya Vidmahe. Then what he is describing is Vidmahe. Vid means to know. Now I have known. What did he know? Ekadantaya. He saw a single tusk one. Then Dhimahi, to know and to experience are different things. There are people that talk after they practice and experience. There are those that talk without any experience like me. Huh? Those are very different things. Whatever Swami speaks is what he has experienced. So when those people that talk with experience, the value of it is much more different than those that simply know something and chant. You understand? So, many of the people that chant these Vera Mantras today that only know about it, but they haven't experienced it. But experience is as important as just knowing. Dhimahi means experience. The intellect, Dhi means intellect. Dhimahi means the intellect has now experienced it. And then once knowing and experience come together, then it becomes a manifestation which is reality. That means prachodayat. Now, does it make sense now? Dhi, vidmahe means to know. Dhimahe means to experience. Prachodayat means manifestation. Becomes reality. You understand? When you said Saishwaraya Vidmahe, Satya Devaya Dhimahi, Tanda Sarva Prachodayat. So, what did he actually know? What did he experience? What became reality? That's what he described in front of Swami. What did he know? He knew that Saishwaraya, Sai is the Ishwara. He is the divinity himself. Then he said, Satya Devaya. He is the God of truth, Dhimahi. He experienced it. 
and then when once the knowing and the experience came to, together then he immediately saw that the love and the energy of swami is pervading each and every person sitting in that hall that day then he said tanna sarva prachodaya then he is manifested in every single person sitting there and that's why it became sai gayatri yes somebody raised and yeah mera Now, why knowledge doesn't convert into experience is because practice is lacking. Knowledge is something that doesn't become wisdom. Knowledge becomes wisdom with practice, and then it becomes awareness through reality. So, simply because you know something, it doesn't become wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom are different. There are people that are highly knowledgeable. but they are not necessarily the wise people why because only the wise execute the knowledge into practice hmm? i am a very knowledgeable person but i may not be the most wise person the most wise are the ones that actually translate the knowledge into practice and then the practice becomes wisdom when the knowledge and the practice come together it becomes awareness other until then it becomes chumma chanting chumma chanting means what and what does chumma chanting mean simply chanting simply simply chanting you sit and you say you say you sing manas bhajare guru charanam dustar bhav sagar taranam if you simply sing that it is knowledge but when you understand what is manas bhajane guru charanam and when you sing that song you experience the feet of the lord then it becomes an offering but when that offering touches everybody sitting at that point of time it becomes manifestation understand the difference so every single bhajan leader should experience the bhajan that they are singing otherwise it is chumma singing they have to practice what they are singing and everybody wants to come and release a new bhajan every single week oh i sang that bhajan already why should i not sing another why should i sing another new bhajan no no there are people that release bhajans there are people that use bhajans to release them one bhajan is enough to release you from bondage one mantra is enough to release you from bondage ha huh? you understand If you come to sing a bhajan to make it technically appealing, then you are get, getting more bound and more bound, more bound to your ego. One bhajan is enough. And every one of you children here, when you sing a bhajan, are you experiencing that bhajan? How many of you, when you get onto the stage and told the dialogue last week? when you are saying those dialogues you are experiencing the divinity that how many of you are connecting to that that's what makes it an offering not simply getting on the stage and doing a drama then it becomes only drama when you take the d out of drama what is there drama the d is the distraction and when you take the d out from drama what remains is rama this life is a distraction all what you experience around is drama all very interesting but when you only get caught up in what is interesting and the distraction it is a drama take the d out you will be able to see rama in everything that you do ha huh? you understand yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so the point about om gam ganapataya namaha when he chanted it with practice when he practiced it and this is very important brothers and sisters lot of people in the organization are getting confused and confusing the confused and they say there is no point in chanting all this stuff that they say and this is confusion yeah yeah it is true for you but don't tell it to others let others practice what has been practiced for eternity and experience the divinity let them practice it 
and this practice when you do as individual and the practice when you do together has a much more significance because when you do it together the energy that is created is exponential it is not linear when you go sit in your altar i do my abhishekam every day rudram chanting but that experience is very different when there are thousands of people that are sitting and doing the same thing the experience is much more and that is the purpose of pilgrimage when you go on a pilgrimage you practice things together you adore the divine together pilgrimage is not excursion a picnic there is a difference between a picnic and a pilgrimage picnic is nit picking nit picking <laughs> but pilgrimage is something a sadhana together and that is what is the importance of pilgrimage and picnic are you going for puttaparthi picnic or are you going for puttaparthi pilgrimage pilgrimage what does that mean yeah yeah the holy place first has to be experienced here the puttaparthi has to be experienced here and the way you experience this puttaparthi here is coming together doing chanting celebrating his glory doing his service doing the satsangs and then you experience the divinity together and all of the devotees that come together and practice day they go and they see what they experienced manifested in front of them as the divinity and that is darshan that is what ganakarishi did then when he experienced the divinity he expressed it as one mantra what is it om gam ganapataye namaha then he said ekadantay vidmahe i know that he is the one vakratundaya dhimahi now i am able to experience it as one mantra tanno dante prachodayat and the reality is he is the one that is enabling everything lot of people sing this shlokam agajanana padmakam gajanana maharnisham aneka dantam bhaktanam eka dantam upasmahe now what does it mean that god has only one tooth and we have 32 so we should be better than god <laughs> god has only one tooth <laughs> and how many we have 32 who is better hey simple math huh? then why do you pray to the god that has only one tooth ha ah, this is the logic ka huh? flawed logic one is enough we have 32 even and then we have problems we go to a dentist to get it <laughs> fixed ha <laughs> huh? swami actually lost one of his eyes many years ago ekana ha huh? and he described this in a discourse he lost one of his uh, the left eye he totally lost sight and for a number of years he didn't even tell to anyone and when they did the surgery on him they were doing the total scan of the body and said swami there's a problem with the left eye then he said yeah 15 years ago i lost sight of that <laughs> swami we should go ahead and fix that in the high hospital he said why i can see without any of these eyes you have two eyes and yet you cannot see i don't need two eyes i can see without the eyes this is physical thing he said and probably he doesn't even hear with one of the ears i don't know what but it doesn't matter but when the god is in front of you yeah he absolutely has no context of what the body is about yes something happening interesting okay eka dantaya vidmahe i recognize or i know the one with single tusk now what is the significance of this single tusk you see the ganapati is this thing right elephant has two big tusks but ganesha has one of it broken and who in the children here know the story of yes divya 
Ya. So why was he chosen to write Mahabharat? Ah, see, when you children hear these stories and when adults tell these stories to you, you should ask these questions. There are so many smart people. Why only Ganesha was chosen to write Mahabharat? Now adults. Any adult answers that question? Yes? No, that I know. I am asking why is he chosen? Why was he chosen to scribe? Why not anybody else? No, why was he the only one that can uh, understand and write and write the fastest than anybody else? Why? He, know, he knew English. He knew English, yeah. <laughs> okay, what? Huh? The only that has the tusk, yeah. We have 32 of them. <laughs> you, you have been hearing about all this Veda class. Huh? There you go. Finally she answered exactly that. He is the only one that is not distracted by the senses. And he is the controller of the mind and the intellect. So he is the one that can focus the most. In the world? And that's why when we learn about this Ganesha, he is the one that is the bestower of all the knowledge because the knowledge beyond the senses he is able to give to you. And that's the reason why Vedavyasa went to him because he is the ruler of the senses. He needed a scriber that is so focused and not distracted and doesn't have attention deficiency syndrome like most of the children today have. Hey. <laughs> Are you hurt? Yeah, okay. The point of that is at least you should pay attention. That's what it means. Not daydream. You are listening to something. All of a sudden I see the children. They are in front of you. They are listening to you. All of a sudden they go someplace else and they are distracted by something else. That's me. That's you. That's you. <laughs> so he is the only guy that was not distractible. So he gave a condition to Vedavyasa too. And the condition he gave to Vedavyasa was... See, he's not an ordinary guy, yeah? you know. He simply, Chumma, he didn't sign up for scribing. Ah, Veda Vyasa, big deal, come on, I will scribe for you. He didn't say. No, not say it as fast as possible. Yeah, he said, when I am scribing, my scribing should not stop. He sh you should continuously narrate and he will continuously scribe. Then Veda Vyasa gave him opposite condition. Then he said, yes, but you should not scribe without understanding what I am saying. See? Now you see, this is an in intellectual challenge. The guy that was scribing, he has so much control about his senses, so focused that while that guy was narrating, he was scribing what he was actually understanding, not just scribing notes like and then go back home and say, okay, what did this guy, oh, did this didn't make sense, oh, I should have asked the question in the class, oh, too late, the guy is not going to, <laughs> he didn't do all that. While he was scribing, he understood what he was scribing. Now, this is the story about, uh, now, when he was asked to scribe, he didn't say, let me go get a pen and a pencil and then because he has to scribe continuously, right? And he has to scribe continuously, he wouldn't have time to go look for any pencil or pen or anything like that if he runs out of ink. Then what did he say? He immediately took one of his tusks, he broke it and he said, I'm going to use this. And he was ready to break the next tusk if he needed to, to scribe. And to scribe in those days, they used the leaves and they created the impression. And the tusk was so focused, it was so pointed, and that the tusk has the ability to scribe on the leaves and create the impression. Ekadantaya means the one who sacrificed one tooth of his for the sake of the humanity. And sacrifice is what we are celebrating today. What is today? Easter, Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday stands for what? Jesus. God? The 
<laughs> the boss of Jesus, I mean, uh, Jesus uh, comes back to life. Jesus comes back to life. Oh. It's the resurrection of the Jesus. I know, you will all learn it in SSC class today. I'm, I'm sure you are all going to talk about Easter today. My so, told me. yeah, yeah, that's very good. Now, Ekadantaya Vidmahe means I know the one who sacrificed himself. And the sacrifice is the essence of Ekadantaya Vidmahe. People say, Anekadantam Bhaktanam, Ekadantam Upasmahe. That means the devotees have many tooth, but God has only one. <laughs> but that's not the way it should be chanted. You know? That's not the, people sing Aneka Dantam Bhaktanam. That means the devotees have many truth. Aneka Dantam. Eka Dantam but the God has only one, therefore I pray to him. <laughs> That's not the meaning of what that is. Aneka Dam Tam Bhaktanam. You best of Dam means boons. Aneka Dam, the one who gives many boons, you to the devotees. The Ekadanta, the one with one tooth, I pray to you, that is what it means. Now you see, if you don't know the meaning and you can, how it becomes? Totally distracted meaning. Huh? And it was created purposefully for the devotees to think and chant. But now, thinking is not for us, we only chant. Thinking is for God. He will listen to us, yo, what is saying? <laughs> Swami is, in spite of it, is doing like this. Huh? In spite of it, in spite of all your mistakes, he gives you boons Ooh. to the devotees. Boons means he bestows, he gives you grace. In spite of what you do, all the stupid things, in spite of it, just like parents, the love of the parents. No matter how many mistakes the child makes, the parents still love them. But to such a level of stupidity that they encourage the children to make mistakes. Then the child begins to think that to make it, he has to be loved, you know, make mistakes to be loved. <laughs> hey, sit properly. Yeah, please sit properly. So what hello, sit properly. We are almost done for two minutes. So let's chant with uh, now Ekadanta that Ekadantaya with Mahe Vakratundaya Mahi. There is a lot more inner meaning to this mantra, which I don't think I'll be able to go in today. It has totally different context and it means totally different. It's even not even related to Ganapati, what we see as Vakratundam. It is even much more profound than that. So we will relate to that next class. Yes? So why is it called Sai Gayatri? Why is this called Sai Gayatri? Why is it called, no, which one? Sai Surai Vidmahe or this one? This one is called Ganapati Gayatri. Sai Gayatri, Sai... Huh? Yeah, we'll, we'll, why is it called Gayatri? Is fundamental question. Why are these things called Gayatri? What is the meaning of Gayatri you should learn? What does Gayatri mean? What does Mantra mean? Even those things we should ask those questions. And I know parents will at least try to go on Google and try to find the meaning. Huh? Or they will say, go ask mom, I am busy. <laughs> true, true. And poor mom, you know, she has to do everything. Huh? Telling the meaning also. But mother is the first teacher. Without mother, the world won't exist. She is the very first teacher. So, it's called Gayatri. Gayatam Trayate Iti Gayatri. Mananat Trayate Iti Mantraha. Why is it called Gayatri? The one that manifests itself and protects your being upon continuous repetition is Gayatri. The one that manifests itself and protects you upon con constant contemplation is Mantra. Mananat Trayate Iti Mantraha Gayatam Trayate Iti Gayatri. But we don't do any of those things. We simply think it is. But the point is, even if you don't know and you repeat it, it has effect on you. But you have to say it properly. And of course, if you are spiritually evolved, you say, I am spiritually evolved, I don't chant any of this. It doesn't matter to me. Oh yeah, that's all. 
perverted philosophy. Let me be very clear about it. <laughs> because for thousands of years experience in this and they are telling based on their experience. You say, no, no, here, I will give you, you have blood pressure, take the medication. No, I am beyond everything, I don't want medication. Do you say that? No, no, you take the medication. When you come to such a stage that you have conquered your body consciousness, it's Hiram Power. And if you are able to take care of yourself without external dependence, then you can say, I am beyond everything and I don't need to chant everything. Stop eating food and live. Stop taking medication and survive. Then you call yourself as the evolved one. Right? But unless we become that, trust me, this thing helps you. <laughs> It is tried and true. So don't tell people that don't chat. It is not needed. Yeah. Why all this? I do my service. Yeah. Hanuman, who is the ultimate service guy, chanted Rama Namam forever. Even Jesus Christ had done simple practices like meditation, yoga and all these things. So don't get distracted by the confusing, confusing the confused. The confused are confusing the confused. Stick tuned all the time. Don't get confused. This is the point of Gayatri and all these mantras have that such a significance. <coughs> so, let's chant the last piece of uh, Ganadi Purva Mucharya and we'll conclude the class for today. Ganadi Purva Mucharya Varnadi Sadhantaram